Good evening and welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Tonight's guest is Creek Wilson. I hope you enjoy the show. Good evening, Creek Wilson. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I've just finished an interview with Steve Wise, the director great that was on Blackwater great Blues. Yes, he is a great director and he speaks highly of all of you. He really enjoyed working with all of you on Blackwater yeah, Blues. So this is Chatbox with Sam. So I do seven seven questions and I do talking about your career and life and then it's just chatting and chatbox and that's what it's all about, just finding people's familiarities and how we're the same yet uniquely different. We're all human beings and I'm very empathic soul. So, you know, I just love talking to people and getting it out there that, you know, we're just all human and let's all be nice to each other, you know? Absolutely. I agree that, with you. Thank and you. Here, that's what we call Southern hospitality. Right. I know. I was there in Mississippi last year and everybody was lovely and the food was lovely. And it kind of reminded me of being back home in England. You know, this is my second home in California, but because they're kind of like that there too. And it was really nice. No one was right. So, Creek, if you were to encourage the younger generation, what would be the main focus? to treat your neighbors the way you want to be treated. The golden rule. That's very good. It's like treat people how you want to be treated. Because if you think that, then it will make you think, would I want to be treated that way? How would I feel? You know, I said you can't walk in someone's shoes, but you can walk beside them, right? That is true. That's very good. So what do you think regarding regarding the industry that you're working in how would you encourage them to step forward into that well i started at 50 years old and i'm 59 years old right now oh so i quit work and in this industry in anything you do in life give it a hundred percent don't have well, I may not have to be able to say this, but it's a Southern slang phrase. Don't half-ass do your life. <laughs> I like it. And I love your accent, by the way. It's very well, Southern. Yeah, I love yours also. Thank you very much. Yeah, if we all had the same accent, it'd be a boring world, wouldn't it? <laughs> so you said you were 50 when you started this career. What actually inspired you into this career, the change? My 23-year-old daughter. And at when she was 15, I quit work and mm -hmm. we spent the whole summer traveling because I've raised her by myself since mm. she was a year old Aww. and it was just us. Mm. And the, uh, so we spent all summer. Her birthday is August the 6th. So when she turned 16 and I bought her a car, mm -hmm. she goes, daddy, I'm tired of you walking around with your nose up my butt. You need to get a job or do something. And right. I actually said, who's going to hire a 50 year old man? And she goes, well, why don't you be an actor? She had seen me do local theater yeah. uh, growing up. So she goes, be an actor. So about two weeks later, I was on the set with Nicolas Cage and left behind and oh. I actually did stunts. Uh, I was just doing background work just to see what yes. life on the set was. And I ended up doing a stunt scene and things progressed, networking, meeting the right people, yes. taking acting classes with uh, well-known actors in the South who has actually taught in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and it's been working 30 plus years in the each of them in the movie industry mm. and I've been blessed oh. in the last several years well you know you you are living proof that you're never too old you're never too old to start something new and pursue something 
Absolutely. So it doesn't matter if you're 50 or or whatever. You, if you want to do something and have the courage to go and do it and and pursue that and never give up and look what happens. That's just per. That's the inspiring story, Creek. I. That's really. It's really good to hear. It gives everybody hope. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's awesome. Like and then when you start it, you don't half-ass do it. You do it a hundred percent. Put everything into it. I was like an ambassador of LatFam Love America tour that Corinne was doing the documentary for, and doing live streams and like live coaching. And then I decided to do my own show, do this, and you know, bring in showing how humans were familiar yet uniquely different, and how to be kind to each other, and you know just showing people's lives that we're all the same we all have love and heartache and, and happiness and sadness and anger and, and we're all you know we're just human beings you know and, uh, I thought am I too old for this you know but I, I'm doing it <laughs> you know so yeah I I can relate I how has music influenced your life well I wanted to be Garth Brooks before there was <laughs> I actually started playing professional music uh, when I was 13, mm -hmm. playing in bars and fairs and other things, and which country music, and I'm not talking about the new country, I'm talking about the old country, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams oh. Jr., yeah. you know, the outlaw Willie Nelson. Yes. They have influenced my life uh, at a young age, mm -hmm. and they still influence my life. So I like all genres of music, mm -hmm. but country is my favorite. What out of all the charities that you could choose from, which one would you choose to advocate or donate to, and why? I would have to say uh, the founder of Wendy's, franchise hamburgers mm -hmm. uh dave who uh advocates or he advocated for adoption or adopted kids yeah i would have to say that because i am adopted i got adopted at two months and three days old Aww. and uh so that's always been my life so mm. i would have to say that would be the biggest charity that i would I want to see kids get a better start in life. And I was very blessed. My biological mother could have had an abortion, you know, yeah. in a back alley with a coat hanger with one of those little yeah. light bulbs hanging up above They used you. to do that, didn't they? Yeah. Back in the day. And, you know, mm -hmm. when I was born. And she actually gave me a chance and to have a better life. And I had the best mom and dad growing up. Aww. And my dad passed away. My mother is 91 years old now. Still lives by herself, drives. And oh, bless her. She's got a great mind. Her body's gone down a little bit. But Aww. being adopted, you have that animal mm. in the back of your head. Yeah. That, you know, you don't know what's, it's a black hole back here. Mm. You have to look forward, you know, you can't, you go to the doctor, you know, they ask all these questions about uh, health. family history and health, you don't know. So I have met my biological mother mm -hmm. and which not really a relationship, but she had five boys by the same man, supposedly, mm. and I have met all my all four of my brothers, my, oh. my real brother. So we're all real close. So did my dad. He met all his brothers and sisters too. There was two girls and two boys, and he had there was five children that she had with the same man, and married him. What? But she was unmarried when she had my dad. You, that's so similar to my father. Now she kept my biological mother. Gave the first three boys you know, to adopt it, being out adoption. And she kept the last two boys. So, but we all, we're all real close. We, we've known each other now about 12 years. Nice. 
I'm glad you all met. I'm very glad. How do you feel about what has transpired since COVID-19? COVID sucks. So what's transpired? Ooh. I that have a different mindset about it. Mm -hmm. I believe COVID is a very serious disease. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, actually, she's a nurse. Yeah. She got COVID about three or four months ago. Mm -hmm. So that kind of changed my mindset a little bit. I haven't had COVID. Mm -hmm. I've been around people with COVID, mm -hmm. but I think it scared a lot of people in the world. Me mm -hmm. personally, it did not scare me. Right. So I've dealt with all, I've, I do construction also. Yes. Uh, rem home remodeling. Mm -hmm. And I've been around the black mold. I've mm. been around everything during COVID. Maybe it just made me immune to COVID. I don't right. know. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I, I'm not the type. I'm the type if uh, I go someplace, they want me to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask out of respect. Right. Yeah. But I'm not the type to be scared and just walk around or drive down the highway <laughs> with, a mask. with a mask on. Well, actually, they're telling you not to actually drive with them because you could, you know, pass out. Yeah, but you see a lot of people doing that, though. I know. It's kind of scary. It is. And I think I th it scared a lot of people. I just, I'm just not the type to be a scared person in life. Yeah. You know, people have fears, and it's a very strong emotion. Fear is as strong as love and hate. And, you know, um, you can't talk them out of their fear, you know. Well, you know what my daddy always told me? What's that? Smoking will kill you, drinking will kill you, and a wild woman will kill you. So, I've had all three. Still <laughs> <laughs> there you go, living proof. The things that can kill you actually won't. <laughs> so do you ever see life returning to a normality? Yes, I do. Give it about another year. Right. Thank you. Is there any character that you've played in a role that you could identify with your own persona, your own personality? Yes, kind of, sort of. Uh, I did a movie called Cornbread Cosa Nostra. Yeah. Actually, Jason London's uh, brother, Jeremy, was in it. Oh. And we shot this about three or four years ago, and I actually played a – it was based on a true story from Biloxi in Gulfport, Mississippi, about the Dixie Mafia back in the 80s. Oh, that sounds interesting. And I played Johnny Handsome, the hitman, or the the main hitman. Mm -hmm. And in some roundabout ways, yeah, being from the South, and I may not need to admit this on <laughs> your program, but... It's okay. I have been I have been in some shady places in my life mm -hmm. and you know, the back backwoods gambling, bootlegging, no <laughs> killing. No killing. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> some of the places that I have been and yes, it's the excitement of being there when you know, this is when I was younger. Yes. And so I would say that that would be the closest character that I could say that I could put my own persona into that character. Awesome. Well, I have played drunks. I've played homeless men. Uh, I was in Ma with Octavia Spencer and played uh, the liquor store bum. Uh, I was in Wounds with uh, Army Hammer and Dakota Johnson, mm -hmm. and I played a drunk in a bar singing 
Oh, when the saints go marching in. <laughs> Good song. Good song. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've played the bikers, the mm. tough cowboys. Yeah. This role as Phelps, he was a comic book store owner, kind of, uh, and I'm trying to say the political correct, but as Jason told me, about one step down from being gay. So, <laughs> Is that what Jason said? What, so, you know, I, I had to do a complete 180 on this part. Right. And, you know, maybe a guy who got bullied in his younger life. Yes. And is scared of his own shadow. Mm -hmm. But he was in the underworld and mm -hmm. doing shady things through the uh, comic book store that he owned. Yes. And he knew a lot of stuff that went on in Blackwater, you know, from years ago yes. when uh, Corin and Jason's characters were in prison for 10 years. Right. You know, so the uh, he gets threatened. So I had a couple of times in the show uh so i had to be where i'm not really scared of them well i had to be scared where yes. i'm normally not scared in my characters or in real life mm -hmm. but uh but it was just kind of a little uh nerdy scared scaredy cat type guy so yeah. it was a different a different role than i have played before File. Do you have any roles that you hoping to um, play in the future that you've got? I know you can't talk about them because of contracts and everything, but um, are you hoping to play more roles in the future in the industry when it starts opening up again outside yep. Mrs. outside Mississippi? Well, I have a, a representation. I have a manager in Hollywood now. Yes. Uh, I have an agent in Atlanta mm -hmm. and I've already been blessed just in the last month or month and a half. I've auditioned for Grey's Anatomy or a guest starring mm -hmm. role and for the good girls, uh, a co-starring role. Mm -hmm. No, I did not get the parts, but they were both challenging mm -hmm. uh, roles and I was blessed to get those, the, the opportunity to have those. Uh, I've got a movie I'm shooting at the end of this month mm -hmm. in Louisiana called Cedar Creek. It's a thriller. Oh. And so i am got a kind of a semi lead role in it. So mm -hmm. there's, that's the only other thing I've shot. I've shot several national commercials. So I've been blessed with that. I was in the Budweiser Super Bowl commercial. Oh, really? In 2017, mm -hmm. and had a uh, had a uh, primary role in it. So, uh, from what I've done to what I'm doing now, I always leave the door open, and Absolutely. I take every audition as an opportunity to. To further my craft. Would you like <clears throat> to tell the audience how they could reach you on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook if you'd like to give your profile handle? If Creek Wilson. Uh, I think on Instagram it's Creek underscore Wilson. And then I don't remember, I don't do Twitter that much. So I can't remember what it is. But, uh, <laughs> I'll, but, I'll look for you on there. I'll do a search. Okay, but on Facebook, it's Creek Wilson. Okay. So I have a regular uh, a regular page. Then I have a fan page also. Well, I've been so, looking forward to this interview since you contacted me. So I feel honored. Oh, and I feel honored to have you on this show too, uh, Creek. I feel very honored. Well, I'm I hoping Blackwater Blues gets picked up. and So do I. You so know, it, it I hope everyone watches out for Blackwater Blues. Absolutely. Yes. 
It looks very good. The trailer was awesome. It was, wasn't it? Yes, very, very fine job by all cast, director and crew. Very fine. I, for one, I definitely want to see Blackwater Blues succeed we'll and continue that. on. I really like that waistcoat you've got on, Cree. Could you... It's very smart and lovely. Where did you get that from? I had this uh, made for a movie that I did a couple of uh, years ago. So, and got to wear it in that movie just for a cameo, but uh, Son of a Gun was the name oh. of it, and I played a gambler oh. back in the old 1800s. It's beautiful color. Oh, really? It's very fetching. Very nice, Creek. Well, well I thank you. You're welcome. It's the good thing about it. I'm sitting here with a nice shirt. Yes. My nice vest. And I'm sitting in here in a pair of shorts, so y'all can't see. Me. <laughs> it's like that that photos that came out on Facebook when COVID hit and everyone was quarantining. There was a guy and he, he had a microphone in his hand, and then behind him, he got nothing on from here down. He was, you know, exposed, but he didn't mean to be exposed. And then he's just sitting there in a pair of underwear and but shirt and tie. <laughs> But I have to tell you one little story real quick before you leave. Okay. Here in Mississippi or here in Alabama uh, or in the South, I don't know how it is in California. We keep getting these robo calls about our extended warranty on our vehicles. <laughs> well, about two or three months ago, it's usually like, hello, I'm calling you about your extended warranty. Then I picked the phone up. It was a, showed a local number and it was a kind of a nice sounding young lady hello and then you, you kind of drew me in and i go uh hello and then you it was a recording this is <laughs> sarah i'm calling you about your extended warranty well it they actually got sexier i reckon Mm -hmm. So anyways, last night when you called, <laughs> I was actually asleep in the bed. I was, in, <laughs> I was in Jackson, Mississippi at my daughter's house. Mm -hmm. And I was, I picked the phone up and I saw the number and I go, I, you know, I didn't know who it was. And I was expecting, then you came on with your English accent. <laughs> and I went, Damn, they have gotten a lot better at this. <laughs> How is your extended warranty? <laughs> oh, that, it, that thought kind of popped into my head. That's a funny story. We'll leave that in. You came on. You sounded like, damn, they even got better now. They've got an English woman doing these calls. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you so much, Creek. It was, you look lovely. I love that waistcoat. Um, and uh, keep in touch. And thank you very much for coming on Chatbox with Sam. I'm sure the audience are going to enjoy this interview very much. Thank you so much for your presence. Well, thank you for allowing me to be on with you. Enjoy. Oh, it's my pleasure and honor. Thank you so much, Creek.